we're, we're a bit we're a bit confused at the moment here on the We Don't Know show because um, so, some, somebody came in saying they had information for us and now they've introduced somebody else. So we're going we're going to start again if that's if that's all right with with you. Absolutely. Um, I'm Will. I'm John. And I'm Ben. Ben. Um, so. Ben, the, the, there is an ultimate. Uh, eventually, we're going to get to the being an offer that you're looking for people, uh, a na- native speakers of English with an English accent. Let's. Should we just try and do this? Because I've got this piece of paper with a barcode. Yeah. Um, oh, I can explain. A bit you explain it a bit. Yeah, yeah, ben. sure. So, um, I'm Ben. I work for a company called Appen in Exeter. We're actually an Australian company, and we've got offices all around the world, but. We're running a project here in Exeter at the moment to find 150 people who have English accents. So people from Yorkshire or Lancashire or Devon, Cornwall, Kent, wherever it is, as long as it's English. And we work Can you in- Can go a bit, cl- just a bit oh, yeah, sure. We work in um, artificial intelligence. So it's things like voice recognition, like Google or Alexa or Siri. and. Uh, this project is all about trying to improve recognition of different accents so people might have a really thick Yorkshire accent, for example. And we're recording in Exeter to give um, those software more data so they can learn to recognise people much better. Right. Yeah. So this, th- this offer is uh, paying people to have their voice recorded. Yeah. Somewhere in Exeter. Yes, absolutely. So Phonic um, 106.8 FM are using a studio next to us. And in our studio next door, um, we just need people to come and do an hour of speech in their accent completely anonymously. And we pay them £80. It takes about two hours to do one hour of speaking because we have little breaks between sentences. It's just lots of little sentences, random lines, random names random digits, phone numbers, fake things. Um, and it's all about recognizing your way of speaking. It's not personal data in any way. And we give you 80 pounds. Well, that sounds so reasonable. That does sound <laughs> reasonable. My, my friend here might be interested. <laughs> yes. Because this is, um, you can see he's in, he's in a, a wheelchair. So there's a, there's a limited number of jobs you can do sitting down. But uh, yes. this, is, this is, could be one of them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a one-time thing, so if you want, you are interested, you can come and do it for two hours, and it doesn't matter if you've got any experience or any qualifications. It doesn't matter who you are, how old you are, gender, anything like that. Um, and all, all we care about is that you're from England, not Wales or Scotland or Australia or whatever else. Um, and yeah, no experience. So, required. so it's not, it's not a sort of BBC. Uh, no. A voice that you're looking for, which is just some anywhere in England. Yeah, uh, anywhere in England. So it doesn't have to be BBC voice, received pronunciation. You don't speak like the Queen. You speak your thick accent if you want. It doesn't matter if you have no accent, as long as it's English. And uh, yeah, it's just super easy. You read things off a, a prompt, and then we take the recordings of your voice and say that this sentence is what this person said, and it teaches the system how to recognise your voice. Or your accent, right? You see what I mean? Yeah. No, that's that. that. So, um, how could they find? We've I mean, all we've got at the moment is a bar, a, um, a, a, a QR code box, yes. which is not ideal for radio. No, so. it isn't exactly. So, um, if you are interested in taking part, it can be anyone. Um, if if you don't have a job, or if you have a job and you can come in during work hours, or if you've got kids at home and you might have a free two or three hours during the day. You could maybe pop up to the Exeter Phoenix, which is on Gandhi Street, and you can ask to speak with Valeria, who is our recruiter, and she can take your details, maybe a phone number and an email, and she can get in contact with you to fill out a quick form to say when you're available, what accent you have, um, and then we can go from there and find a time slot that suits you. So yeah, if you are interested, come up to the Exeter Phoenix and ask for Valeria, who's working in the sound gallery studios downstairs. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that sounds fun. So, uh, I don't know, though. I mean, it, we could do... There must be a, a sort of web... Is there a website or a, a is, Twitter feed or anything? We have posted it on Twitter and Indeed.com and 
um, what's that? LinkedIn. Um, but so, so on Twitter. So, who? What would you be on Twitter then? I I don't know. It's Valeria who's done it, but okay. I can get her email address, her direct email yeah, address. Yeah. Well, look, we'll get, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll we'll co we'll contact Valeria after this. Yeah. And we'll somehow find through Twitter the magic of Twitter. Yes. Something that people could find because um. I mean, a lot a lot of people are passing by the Phoenix. It's true. Yes. But it just seems a bit. But only one. If that's the only option we're offering. No, I know, I know exactly. It's hard to get <laughs> details quite... over radio, eh? Hey? So um, <laughs> we'll we'll find an easy way to get um, a link for people to sign up, um, or an email address to speak directly with Valeria, or we might be able to give her phone number to everyone as well. But we'll we'll get in touch with Valeria and discuss. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, look. Having sorted that out, mm -hmm. and now that you're here and we've understood what this is all about. Um, and we've, I think in the next quarter of an hour, if you can stay quarter of an hour, yeah. um, voice recognition, voice interfaces to computers, yeah. artificial intelligence behind it all. Yeah. Um, John, I'm going to stop you off. Okay. First off, um, visibility. The, well, Explain your situation. I'm, well, I'm fairly slight impaired. I've got, uh, I've got a condition called cerebral palsy, spastic yeah. cerebral palsy. And I used, um, well, I used to use Windows, mm. Windows XP and Windows 7. So Dragon Naturally Speaking was actually uh, introduced to me mm. um, in the early days. When I say early days, I was fif uh, 15 when I started using the uh, uh, um, voice recognition yeah. or Dragon Naturally Speaking to be more precise. Mm. And... I started off with Dragon 9.5, then went to 10, but from from 8 onwards, uh, the accuracy for Dragon, naturally speaking, really did improve. Yeah. Um, then a couple of years later, I went over to Mac OS, yeah. and I stick with Mac OS nowadays, but they stopped making Dragon, naturally speaking, for Mac OS. Uh, because they see Siri and um, the dictation package that they have on their system, Apple system, as suffice. Uh, yeah. But I know they've upset a lot of um, uh, people with physical disabilities by um, discontinuing uh, the Mac version of Dragon, of Dragon, actually speaking, or um, Mac dictation that they used to have for 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 the Mac. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I am aware of um, many, I, I have used voice recognition for the last 10 years or so. So yeah. I'm very familiar with, with, with it really. Yeah, yeah. This is the problem. Lots of um, technology companies or vehicle manufacturers or computer manufacturers have. It's deciding whether they're going to make their own software. Could you or, a bit closer? Oh, yeah, sorry. Whether they're going to make their own software or if they're going to rely on someone like um, Google um, or Siri or Alexa. Mm. And so car manufacturers, I won't mention any names, um, some of them try and design their own yes. to uh, press the button on the steering wheel and see if they can make the voice recognition work that way. Or they buy an off-the-shelf system like Google, Alexa, Siri, whatever, um, and interface with that. And both have their drawbacks and, and, and benefits. So it's a shame that Dragon, is it called Dragon Natural Speech? Dragon Naturally Speaking. Uh, if they... But it's still available for the Windows. For Windows. For, um, for Windows platforms. And they just decided that for Mac OS, they're just going to go with Siri. Yes. Oh, that's a shame. And it doesn't work as well for you? It doesn't work as well for me or many other users. Yeah. Was Dragon designed for UK speech, or was it kind of international English? Well, it was it was it was international hmm. English. It had US English, Indian English, yeah. and uh, um, several you know several other different um, languages. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Dragon, naturally speaking, was an international, very much international yeah. um, thing, really. I mean, I'm no expert, but I think some of the major manufacturers like Apple and Google um, might not necessarily always go down the line of their consumers being people with physical disabilities or visual impairment or they don't. speech difficulties. They go for the general consumer. The general who, consumer, yes. Yeah, which is a shame. It is. And so bespoke software like Dragon is needed, and if they mm. fail to keep it available on a certain platform, 
that's incredibly disappointing. Well, it is a bit disappointing from where I'm sitting. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. So, uh, yeah. But anyway... So is 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 the work that you're doing re- relating to that? I mean, to is it is it going to be the case that the kind of technology John is looking for mm. and needs is that going to get uh, more efficient in itself or easier to access? We work for a variety of different customers, and so uh, the use case for each customer is going to be different. Sometimes a customer will come to us saying, "Look, we're li- interested in improving our data set for people with speech impediments or people with uh, a lisp or uh, or." Uh, something like that um, and we do do that but so it depends on what the client wants this one at the moment is all about focusing on uh, English only accents and so quite thick accents um, for automated speech recognition it's not to go in any consumer software so I can't really tell you much about what the client oh. intends for it but okay. it's all about not uh, avoiding um, focusing too much on a neutral BBC English and getting much better at recognising someone with a thick Cornish accent, for example. Yeah. Right, OK. So that's so. Look, I'm, I'm, this may be completely irrelevant to what you're doing as, as well, but I'm yeah. just going to ask you because it, it's, it's in, interesting to us. Um, and, and another area, apart from um, speech recognition, is image recognition that goes to voice or to, or to sound. Yes. So there's there's some. It's really quite expensive. Uh, a camera which John has looked at. Mm. I th- it's all, all, yes. all cam. It's called. That's another company. It's called All Cam My Eye. Mm. But we um, but um, uh, yeah, it's rather quite expensive, as uh, we all said. Yeah. Um, but I I wonder if that's. I mean, the, all these systems are based on artificial intelligence. So yeah. presumably, the, the the rate at which artificial intelligence becomes mass market is going to it's going to influence the cost of it all these things absolutely so is, is that an area that you've that you've looked at so so in other words if if, if John has um, I think I think all come and there probably are others but that's the main one we've come across some of it is in the glasses so there's glasses with a camera mm. and then and then the speakers into your, into your ears yeah um, but they also have a device you can just point at a book, but you need a bit more vision in order to use that. You also need a steady hand as well, which is... Uh, yes. I don't have, you know, my fine motor skills are, are impaired, mm. so um, it's very, very hard to, for me, in my case, to to um, to, to actually use one of those reading pens. Yeah. Um, but the uh, regular you know there might be other consumers that find that very useful so it all has its uses but like like, like you said it depends on what the consumer wants out of these yeah. of the of this of these technology packages anyway so. the the um the thing that those companies struggle with is if they're a small company and they've got a very niche um use case for example um the, the percentage of the population with a very specific physical disability, um, they might do the, the economics and think, uh, we're going to need really cheap data, a lot of cheap data to do this at a, an affordable price for someone like John. Um, and so we as a company, we provide them that data, so it might be um, handwritten speech or printed um, uh, text with an annotation that a human has done. So for example, when it sees this image, it knows that it's supposed to be spelling these letters. You know, automatic character recognition, that's called. And right. so um, we don't, we just try and meet their use case and the data that they want. Now, in certain um, industries like language preservation or charitable work or things for disabilities we often do work with companies pro bono so we give them that data collect that data for them for free and annotate that data because their idea is they want to get it cheap enough they normally wouldn't be able to do it for example um, they need a thousand hours of audio data for example which costs a lot of money so someone like uh, Amazon or Apple or Google 
we might charge them the normal con expensive <laughs> consumer rates to right. say we're going to collect that data for you this is how much it costs yeah. but a charity or a university or someone like that who are working with very niche or um, beneficial um, use cases like for disabilities we might do it pro bono so we're doing one in, in Australia at the moment to preserve an Australian indigenous language that's disappearing and so we're um, trying to get speech recordings with the last native speakers and we're doing all that for free for I think it's Macquarie University in Australia so right. they can't afford uh, <coughs> collecting all this data themselves because it's expensive and the AI models that they need that data for are expensive enough so we'll do that for free in those cases but it's it depends on the client coming to us um, and we, we work with clients all over the world, all sorts of different clients, um, charitable, academic, uh, commercial, governmental, sometimes different countries. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I think it's just something to look at, you know, and, and I think, I mean, by circumstance, you've turned up here today, which is really great. Yeah. Um, ben, do, do, do you want to say the name of the company or how to contact Absolutely, you? Absolutely, yes. Um, so... Uh, our company is called Appen, A P P E N, and our website is appen.com. So, like I say, we work in artificial intelligence and companies and charities, whoever um, it might be who wants to approach us with a problem that they have for collecting data. Um, they can go on our website and fill out a quick form saying what their use case might be, and someone from the sales department will be in touch with them saying, What do you need? and how can we best fit your needs? And if it's something charitable, we'll consider pro bono. Okay, well, that's, that's great. And um, we, we just need to keep up with what's available. Yeah. Yes. What's, uh, what's, go what's going on, because this whole scene is changing very quickly, it seems, yeah, seems to me. It is, um, and people like Dragon, um, who need lots and lots of data, um, they can buy, we've got off-the-shelf data sets, so we've already collected this data for them, they can buy that at a cheaper rate. Um, so it might be the problem that they haven't got enough data to improve their model for people mm. with speech impediments or particular um, accessibility needs, and so they can just buy that data rather than having to collect it themselves at a cheaper rate. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that, that's all good. And, just, and for people who just tuned in, just going back to the the, the reason this all started, um, you're looking for people with an English accent. Yeah. Um, you're prepared to pay eighty pounds for basically two hours. Yeah. And sorry, I've forgotten her name again. The the, the, the name of the person is Valeria. She is recruiting every one of these speakers. We need one hundred and fifty people, and Valeria is working every morning here at the Exeter Phoenix on Gandhi Street. So you can ask to speak to her um, at the front desk. She's working downstairs in the Sound Gallery Studios. Okay, and we're gonna, we're gonna try and find a Twitter link yes. as well. So we're, we're working on that. Um.